Welcome back everybody, this is Josh here with Basement Level Magic. We have won the die roll and we are going to be on the play. Alright, so we actually see Kithion this time around. Uh, this looks like a, a decent hand. I do believe I'll start off with the Flooded Strand just so I can get something on the board right away. The other option would be to play out the Shambling Vent, and then on turn two we could play both our Woe Reaper and Kithion. But at this point we could just... Um, I'm actually going to start out with Kithion. I don't know how often you actually expect Kithion to flip, but I doubt it's very often. I think maybe they were just looking for a... for a card that could you know, come into play as a 1-mana 2-1 with some upside. So here we'll do our Shambling Vent, play our Woe Reaper. Our opponent's playing a Shambling Vent too, which uh, probably means he's on Obzon. Unless he's like me, he's an early bird who jumped out and built the deck right away too. And it looks like it is Obzon. So, Air of the Wilds. That is fine for us because we'll go ahead and play our Sunken Hollow, play our Bloodshin Rager, and then he cannot block. Actually, he'll be able to block Kithion. Which I think I'm okay with trading. Right? Otherwise, next turn he could flip. Uh, you could either make a creature indestructible, make it a 4-4. Four, four. Hmm. I think I'm just going to go ahead and attack with a Woe Reaper. I've never actually flipped Kithion, so I think it's worthwhile to give it a try. And he... Oh, it's only when Bloodshin Rager attacks. That's fine. We still have a shot at flipping Kithion. And Offenza makes it more difficult, though. I'll just go ahead and play the Strike Leader. Otherwise, what we can do is we could activate our Shambling Vent and attack in, or else dash. Either way, we could look to flip Kithion. Where I would believe that we would just do the plus two. I think I'm actually going to... I'll attack with the Bloodshin Rager. And then I'll play a Strike Leader. Now we know he will not be able to block because uh, it will have Menace. We'll just go ahead and play out our strike leader. And if he doesn't play a creature, but this is Obzon, of course they'll play a creature. They always have another Onofenza or a Siege Rhino out there lurking. Uh, we'll just take the hit here. He 
could also have Obs on Charm if he's looking to draw cards or to exile our strike leader. Yeah. All right. But that's going to allow us to flip Kithion because we're going to go ahead and. Ooh, actually, Silk Rat might be even better. That actually turns on our Wasteland Strangler as well. I think I'm going to do the dash with the Strike Leader, which will flip our Kithion. So we'll attack for seven. All right, and I think I'll just plus two it. So we'll make it so that Anafenza has to attack Gideon rather than our life total. Which, if he has another Abzan charm, he'll be able to go ahead and kill Gideon. But that'll probably be his, his whole turn. That might be what he's deciding. I'm going to let him attack in. We will be able to attack with a 4-4. Four, four. And he's uh, indestructible. I could definitely see a possible Siege Rhino coming here. Oh, Wingmate Rock. Okay. Alright, so I think here we definitely zero the Gideon. It's just warrior creatures that get menace. Yeah, so we actually have lethal on the board now. But just to make sure, or this isn't lethal. Uh, we could do silk wrap. No, if we if we dash the strike leader, then we will. Our warriors will have menace, so we can get seven damage through. And he has to block both of his creatures against them, so, okay. Yeah, so if we just attack with everything, um, our three warriors are gonna be able to make sure we get through. All right, sweet. So to the sideboard, we are against Abzan. Um, Valor stance seems great. Stasis snare, I think, is fine. Ultimate price seems questionable. It probably hits Wingmate Rock, Air of the Wilds, and uh, Warden of the First Tree. Otherwise, Disdainful Stroke will hit his Rhinos. I think Wasteland Strangler is not very good in this matchup. We could do Transgress the Mind, which would hit Anafenza, Siege Rhino, Wingmate Rock. That might be more important than the ultimate price, actually. I 
We are on the draw here. I think I'm going to take out two Blood Soaked Champions, probably. They can't block, and they can't attack through much of what our opponent has. I could even see possibly bringing out the other two, just to bring in two more, the two ultimate prices. Or maybe secure the waste. Try, try like a go wide and play a Chief of the Edge. Give it a whirl. This could easily be the wrong sideboard plan. All right, we're gonna keep this. We've got a removal spell. We've got a couple creatures. Plenty of lands. We could actually use less lands. So he probably has a warden if he's cracking his wooded foothills right now. This deck, I've probably said it a few times before, but I'm actually surprised with how much removal it has. You know, right now we've got four Stasis Snare, four Valor Stance, and four Silk Wraps, so that's 12 removal spells, which is quite a bit for a hyper aggro kind of going for a synergy style of deck. But it does give it a, a chance to last a little bit longer. I was just looking to make sure our opponent did not disconnect. Because they're taking a little while here with their turn one fetch. I'm going to actually go ahead and pause the recording, and then I'll come back when, when our opponent does something. Alright, so our opponent is back, and he did go get a forest, and played the warden that we were expecting. So I'm going to go ahead and play the flooded strand. I want to... We don't really need to draw many more lands. We don't need more than more than four hardly ever. So I guess he'd go ahead and activate. So we can't really can't really block there. But he didn't activate so he's probably got I would just maybe an air of the wild. So I'll go ahead and play the Polluted Delta. And we are not playing any of our blue uh, sideboard cards, so we can just safely grab a Swamp. Uh, here we could just sit back, actually. I don't know how well that sits us, though, in this in this game. He's got a really fast start for, for Obzon. He's got Unoffends Mana, but we do have a way to deal with deal with her. Yeah, 
Yeah, and he doesn't need to kill it there because... Or he doesn't need to pump because he can just kill it. Okay, now, Abzan Charm kills my guy. Uh, here we could just go ahead and do a Shambling Vent. That way we can hit Gideon on time. And play our Will Reaper. We'll get rid of his Warden. The ability to pick and choose creatures to take out of your opponent's graveyard is really important. Um, I'm sure that it has really, a really good effect on the rally matchup. Because it's not just when the Wolf Reaper comes in, it's also when other warriors come in. So you can just pick and choose which creatures to get rid of. Alright, so Siege Rhino comes down. And if he wants to attack... Well, actually we can't do anything. Yeah, the Ferocious makes that a tough... Tough turn there. But we are able to go ahead and play our Bloodshin Rager. And we'll actually exile our own guy just to gain a little bit of life. I do want to Valorous Stance his Siege Rhino right now. Um, otherwise, we would do it during his main. But we want to make sure that he doesn't go to combat because then it would just pump the air of the wilds. Next turn we'll be able to play Gideon, which is going to be able to just pump out ally tokens. I mean, we could even look at possibly doing the emblem, but I think for now I'd like to just build out the board. We also do have Shambling Vents, which we'll need to remember because we can activate that, gain a little life, and, and attack. We will not block the air. Transgress the Mind seems great right now, except for the fact that he had mana for Wingmate Rock and did not play it. So I don't believe that he has anything. Um, we could just do Mardu Strike Leader right now. Which will allow us to attack in for 7 damage and leave back a blocker. I think Gideon, getting Gideon online I think is a little bit more important right now though. And that'll provide us a blocker, giving us the opportunity to keep attacking in. So he'll crack his flooded strand, go ahead and thin out his deck a little bit. Air of the Wilds. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to plus Gideon here and attack. I'm very tempted to go ahead and dash out our strike leader also. It'll die, but it'll leave back a 2-1. We'll be able to take out one of his Air of the Wilds. I'm just torn between doing that or the Valorous Stance. Yeah, I feel like he'll probably 
block the strike leader, which will kill one of them. And we'll go ahead and, yeah, I was going to say, get rid of his Siege Rhino. He's just got nothing. All right, sweet, guys. So we just beat Abzan, and we beat Eldrazi Ramp already. If you like this deck, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. Let us know what you think about this. This is one of our uh, No J Standard deck lists, and it is by Joe So, who just took it to Grand Prix Kobe's uh, finals. Uh, if you enjoy this, please let us know. Thanks, guys. Bye.